Uh, welcome to One Word a Day. <clears throat> I'm Sophia, pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue exploring Chinese expressions, kind of translating Western concepts of um, you know, 20th century, at least, technology. Uh, today, we're going to talk about 人工生命. Uh, First time I heard um, this expression was when I preparing for the episode because I would never imagine there is such a field called the Shengmi, artificial life. Because I mean, today, 2024, uh, ever since last year, 2023, or even <clears throat> November of 2022, when ChatGPT came into being onto the scene and right, become like a public, become mainstream artificial intelligence, AI was being you know, on the top of mind of almost everybody from corporate life to private life, right? But 人工生命 is artificial life. It's even more mind blowing than that, right? Because if we're talking about intelligence, kind of, yeah, it can just exist in a digital form. You know, you can talk with a chat box all day long. It doesn't have to exist in the physical world. It doesn't have to have a life, but when it has a life, <laughs> that's a game changer. And it turned out researchers since 1962, 62, already started this field that study, that study um, the, the natural life, how it exists, how it operates, and how the evolution make it. It is what it is, right? It's amazing. I wish I have known this field long enough so that I can dedicate my life to study artificial life. Um, but artificial in the sense is because humans try to create or recreate or simulate, right? Render life in our capacity to um, to make something come to your life, right? Just like the novel Frankenstein. So uh, it's been, you know, life itself have been long, uh, fascinating to humans because we are alive, we are a form of life, and there are so many different forms of life on this planet. Really, really want to figure it out, right? So there we go. <laughs> Chinese will say 人工生命. So 人工 we talked about yesterday, and as I said, um, the more essential or commonly used Chinese characters are often fewer strokes on it. So you can tell today's screen is kind of you know, simpler. There's no big words uh, that contains like more than 10 strokes. So that's a good sign. Still, let's spend a little time on each one of them. Ren, contemporary Chinese, just two legs standing being. Like, simple as that. Um, traditional Chinese, this is the version somebody summarized that kind of standardized back then. This is the standardization back in 20, uh, no, in 1950s. This is the standardization transition like 100 years ago, since less than 100 years ago. But this one is probably a 1,000 years ago. Some language scholars dig through all the different versions of rendering of the concept of man and come up with this one. So it obviously have two uneven sides. It's not symmetrical image like the contemporary one. Contemporary is easy to render. It's almost like very abstract. You have two legs. But I don't know about you, but we are uneven. <laughs> Even if we, we we have two arms, two legs, if you dig down deeper, the left and right body of yours is different, right? Uh, for example, our heart is situated on one side. Um, so we are definitely asymmetrical creature. And in this traditional Chinese, it rendered that way. So one side is straighter relatively, and the other side is curvier. It almost looks like a contemporary English R, letter R. Um, and for me, that represents we have yin and yang, you know, female, male, um, linear thinking, non-linear thinking, our um, rational side, emotional side, um, our sense and sensual part of ourselves. So that makes humans interesting, right? Each one of us in so many different dimensions can have this fine tuning of uh, you know different parameter settings um, that we may we would make different decisions respond differently to the same situation right that makes man interesting so that's man and gong is the tool that 
craftsmen or ancient engineers. In contemporary profession, it will be engineers because they are house builders uh, that used to make sure the walls of your building up 100% 90 degree, like accurately 90 degree to the ground because Otherwise, it's easier to collapse, right? So that's the tool to make 90 degree angles. And it turned out it's a simple tool, but essential in making the building success. Um, so this eventually represent men building stuff or making stuff, either big, like a bigger than human size uh, architecture stuff or smaller than human size, like miniature stuff whatever we use our hands or wisdom or planning, all that involved into making something that didn't exist before, right? That's making. And that becomes the two symbol. The two becomes the symbol of humans man-made. Oftentimes it involves two, right? From making the tools to using the tool to make other stuff, right? Um, the whole thing can go through making the tools to make the tools to make the tools to make the tools, right? <laughs> Something like that. Um, all right. And Sheng, I, Sheng, I mean, I translate a living life. There are many ways to understand this. Uh, Sheng, I spent a whole summer months last year just quit. Just use this character pair with different Chinese characters after it. Um, so Sheng Ming was talked about before. Um, okay, Sheng is made of this plant-based symbol, this trident-looking thing. This is the plant. And then we have the ground. So apparently this plant has its above the ground portion and below the ground portion. And then we have a second horizontal line, which no longer is the ground because <laughs> underground is the one whole world under there um, or domain we just split by above ground below ground right the second horizontal line is kind of comparable to contemporary arrow pointing so it's a attention focusing attention focuser to show you that out of this symbol a plant still planted um underground with the above ground and underground portion, your attention, your point, your key point, your focus should be on the very tip, like where this horizontal line intersects with. So that's the very end of the root of the plant. So this is your focal point. Okay, so this is the point. And that means the plant is still having the root, the tip of the root underground. That means the plant is still alive because it's still rooted. So that's how we derive the meaning of alive or a living. It's a living thing. It's a still a bio uh, organism uh, with its life. So that's the living concept. And eventually this plant-based plant symbol can be extended into animal forms as well. And actually, it can be bio micro <laughs> microbiomes. <laughs> um, so all forms can can be used with this plant based one. I guess that's the okay a little bit more. That's the way Chinese characters naturally evolve because talking about evolution, evolution of life, we have evolution of characters. This is the way humans abstract our life <laughs> or our world into this 2D frame abstraction, like projection into that. And so the way to make the character being alive, have a long life span of a character. <laughs> Trust me, I, I did this um, episode looking both English and, and the Chinese to make the comparison of how many words and characters. I forget the exact number, but both of them have the character or the word survival rate of 2%. The top 2%. Um, there are many, 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 many more words buried somewhere in dictionary. And some even didn't make it into dictionary, but ever existed, but they didn't get popularized. It's kind of like a viral video. So many videos on YouTube, who got to have more clicks, right? Uh, now we have, you know, quote unquote algorithms, but that's a low survival rate over there in that uh, you know YouTube world. In real life, it's a way more bigger scope, right? 
And in this long history, times like different generations of people using, reusing, repurposing, repurposing or recycling all those characters created by previous generations, like which ones they are going to pick to continue to use, right? So these survivors of Chinese characters, they have a reason to have a long lifespan uh, across thousands of years that we're still using them, but maybe in a little uh, slightly different forms, just like this here, red, illustrated Ren and Ren, um, at different era, they may occur in uh, be rendered differently. But the concept, the key concept, which is what I'm doing right now here, um, the semantic layer of how this 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 concepts got constructed um, was the reason why they are evolutionary survivors, because this plant-based thing are visible, are everyday thing that's are relatable to everybody that we can see a plant, especially is a agrarian society. Everybody know they are close, they live off the land, they're living in this farming lifestyle. So this making sense to everybody. And from this plant base, then we can extract to animal life as well and apply it to uh, microbiomes, which you know, it's science that happened way later afterwards, but the same concept we can extract and trans transfer this concept of being alive, this bio existence um, used in other contexts. So that's why like through thousands of years, the same character can be used, reused, repurposed again and again. Okay, that's life of the character itself. Now me, I mean, it's a little bit more complicated, okay? More strokes and more hmm, abstraction in there. The triangle here, even if it's broken on the two sides here, can mean this hierarchy of social structure. I mean, this pyramid shape of social structure illustration, it's some scholarly uh, modeling of how society works, right? The top is like narrow strip percentage of person a population and then it kind of goes down with a bigger base. You know, that's just a simple way to understand how um, the, <laughs> the, the power structure in a human society. And then we have the power structure illustrated by the oppressor and oppressee. You can frame things that way. The mouth symbol means somebody who is giving orders, giving instructions. So they are the oppressor, kind of tell people what to do. And the right side, okay, so this is a mouth symbol. The right side is a person symbol. And this person is kind of hunching, kind of like doing this. So it's it's a in a submission form. And not only is a hunching, actually, it didn't draw out the full, full thing because I see it rendered in a different frame, in a different way. And I kind of know what exactly that is. It is sitting on the heels. So this is a human, this is your torso, and this is your um, your arms, right? And this person is kind of, uh, this is the thigh and then your knee here. And then you kind of sitting back your calves and then you have a long elongated um, heels. Ancient times to show submission, they sit on heels for, you know, because once you sit on your heels, it's harder. It, take, it takes time for you to rise up and fight right? So when you're sitting on your heels, actually you lose your capacity to fight. And that's a way, a body gesture to show submission. You're not fighting. Almost like a give up your weaponry. Same idea. It's, it's your gesture to show you're listening, you're obeying this mouth symbol. It's, you know, oppressor, oppressee right? in this power structure. And that gives you a sense of, um, when it applies to life, this is kind of a life story or life um, arc, life's arc of how things are going to turn out for you. So this mouse symbol, then this oppressor almost becomes a um, mis mystery of life. It, it may not be your current living social structurally, like who is your boss, your direct, boss who are you are reporting to at work not in that sense it's a way bigger force in life that's kind of dictating dictating how you should live your life 
in you know Christianity's context, this will be God's voice, God's will. You are living out the scripts of the God's will, and under this power structure that the, you are the okay, our individuals. We are the submission person, and then the mouth symbol is the directive where it comes from, right? So in this case, it's it's um mystify. It's life's force or life's occurrence that's beyond your control. So you have to you know, kneel down, sitting on your heels, obeying, following somebody else's script for you. <laughs> and that's Chinese way to understand life. We acknowledge the forces beyond our control. Well, we assign a role in there and make it into this character so that we know um, Often, often uh, Chinese have this expression of when you hit 50 years old, 五十知天命, like you finally know, 天命, like heavenly life, like what heaven, <laughs> this heavenly force or have this life created for because you live through the most part of it, right? You live through the, you're the character in the script and you're, you have almost act out in 50 years. Um, almost like the old, old things happen, already happen, something like that. So it's in that sense, kind of like the concept of destiny. You you live out. Um, if shun is a marker of you are uh, organic or inorganic, your bio, bio-ly living thing or not, me marks temporal sense, like over the lifespan, uh, things happening to you, good, bad, ugly, <laughs> you experiencing, you, while in your living stage, uh, you have this lifespan of uh, experiencing as if it's di dictated to um, from forces outside you and you are living through the script and that's your destiny. So that's Chinese understanding of sheng mi in both temporal sense and bio sense, like we are alive, yes, but we also have this life's journey um, that we are living out. And that's what the full co you know, concept of Sheng Ming. It's not just a, you know, inter, a cross-sectional, a snapshot of your being alive. No, it's a temporal sense, the whole life's arc of yours. That's a whole thing considered Sheng Ming. All right, so Ren Gong Sheng Ming is abbreviated as a life. <laughs> I mean, compared with AI, this is more complicated. It, it's, it's not AL yet because it's not so well known. I guess it didn't make major breakthroughs like artificial intelligence in recent years. Maybe one day this field will, but they, what they are doing is fascinating to me, like studying this bio, um, creatures and to see how to simulate and uh, recreate this. And in a sense, they're playing the God's role, right? They're trying to figure out how, uh, you know, if if we all believe in the narrative of God's create everything, they are playing the God's role to figure out the engineering process of God's, how things come become things they are um, today. So it's, it's fascinating. And just look at this fish, bones and you can see how intricate uh you know bios uh, like we as living creatures um how delicate and everything well connected is i'm sure uh, like scholars in that field have <laughs> it's a fascinating field to be studying that's what, what i'm saying um all right so that's Ren Gong Sheng Ming. i'll catch you into the currency of thinking by one more today with sophie see you another day